Hello, my name is Jerry, and you're watching 3D HP. Enotepad 3D just sent me some really cool Sunlu PETG filament to try out. I've got a roll of black and a roll of white. Let's open the box and take a look at it. This came off of Amazon here in the USA, and they're on master spools. And if you're wondering what's a master spool, basically you're helping out the environment because you're not constantly throwing away plastic spools. Let me open it up here and I'll show you what I'm talking about here. On the roll of black, the spool unlocks, and you can take off the filament. It has Velcro plastic ties on this, so once you're done using the filament, you can put the Velcro ties back on the roll, and you can put it into a Ziploc bag with your desiccant packs to keep it nice and dry. When you put the new roll on, you simply turn it and lock it, and then you're ready to go. Put on your filament holder and start printing. I've got a roll of white here ready to go. It's got a desiccant pack in there. Nicely vacuum sealed, nice and tight. So, I've got a lot of goodies to print, so let me get going here and I'll show you some of this. One other thing I want to mention. On the box, on the back of the box, it shows all their different filaments and their recommended printing temperatures, printing platform for the bed and the different tolerances on all their different uh, materials. And inside the box, let's see what else we have here. It says that's the recyclable spool 3D uh, printer filament. Directions here on how to put it on the spool and how to take it back off. And it's got a little paper here from Sun Lu. Tells a little bit about the company in China. And also, like it has on the box, it tells about their different types of filament and the recommended printing temperatures, the tolerances on the different types of filament, and all the tensile strength for the filament. And on the back, it's advertised for all the 3D pens that they have, different types of 3D pens. Well, let's get to printing, guys, and let's, let's make some cool stuff. Well, I'm all done test printing with my Sunlu PETG. Let me show you some of my failures and some of my great prints. First off, here's a great print. Here's a little mini Joel I did. I got this file off of Thingiverse, it's of Joe Telling. And I left this, I, I didn't do any post processing, so this is how it printed. I printed this in my TiVo Tarantula Pro. Uh, it's 230, uh, 230 on the nozzle and 70 on the bed. And there's very minor stringing, as you can see down here in between the legs. But other than that, it came out great. It's a great finish. There's my Z seam, real faint across the back. You can barely see it. Whenever I print on any of my. Uh, FDM printers, I always turn my model diagonally. That way the Z seam is always in this back corner on the, on the build surface. That came out really nice. And I'd love to play a game in a VR and out of VR. It's called Elite Dangerous. And this is a Python. This is one of my ships that I own in the game. The yellowing that you see here is from the activator. I put it together with a 2P10. It's like a super glue and I use a spray activator. And this was printed in two halves side by side on the build surface. Show you a shot on the screen here on the build surface. It had very minor stringing and where there's a lot of detail here around the engine there's a few little things here I need to clean up with some clippers and then I'll take a heat gun and simply melt off, melt off any uh, strings or boogers that are left over um, from the filament. But that came out really nice. It's got a very nice texture on it. Came out very good, very clean. And for a failure, on my Hypercube, I have a TH3D blue build mat. And I, I printed with it occasionally. I haven't printed that much on it. And I was printing a collapsible sword. And it got about yay high, and then it failed, and it was moving all over the bed, stringing, making a mess. So it lost adhesion. So I kind of gave up on that. And my uh, tolerances were pretty tight, and I'm not sure if this would have unlocked once it was done or not. I probably have had to got in there with a razor blade and separated the sections. So I gave up on that. And then I moved on to a, a twisty vase by a Geeky Fay, a designer I got this from off of Twitter. 
Um, a lot of you guys probably heard of her down below in the description. I'll put a link to where you can get this file at. It was on my mini factory, I believe. And as you can see, I had a failure. I had a, I just had a brim on the bottom of it. Got about yay tall, and then once again, it was moving all over the bed. So I cleaned the bed with isopropyl alcohol very well, and I cleaned it up with steel wool and more isopropyl alcohol, even though it shouldn't have needed it on the build mat. And then I started again on the hypercube. Now I got up about yay tall, and once again it failed. But as far as for the print quality, the PETG from Sunlu came out very nice. It has very minor stringing, which happens. Anything big, like I say, I'll clip off with clippers and just hit it with my heat gun real lightly. And if you don't have a heat gun, blow dryer might work. But, and that was printed with, on a raft. As you can see, the raft is still on it. Um, the only thing I can figure is that maybe I just need to be a little, little, more, a little more squish on the bed on my first layer. Maybe it wouldn't have let loose. But the build mat is not old, so it shouldn't have happened. So I moved over to my TiVo Tarantula Pro, which was, you know, right behind me, ready to go, rather than my Ender 3. And it has a PEI sheet on it, on a spring steel sheet from a TH3D also. And almost everything holds to PEI very well. Like this mini Joel, when I printed it, I didn't have a wrap or uh, anything on this whatsoever, a brim or nothing. It printed on its feet just like that, and that PEI sheet held on to it very well. It didn't move at all. And then, on the back, talking about the vase again from Geeky Fay, I printed this on the Tivo Tarantula Pro, but once it got about yay high, my nozzle was catching the print, and it kind of has a few layer shifts. Then here on the one side, there's four braces here that are completely kicked out of position. But I left it alone. I didn't, I, like I say, I've already tried a few times. I want, wanted the print to see if it finished. And I did finish, and it came out nice. But yes, there are four braces here that are out of place. I didn't want to fix them for the video. I just wanted to show you guys. But then again, like I say, this goes up like little toothpicks, basically. And they, they can move real easily. So any kind of nozzle movement will bump them. But other than that, uh, as far as for the quality of the PETG from Sunlu, it came out great. And there's got her initials on the bottom. GFA. And that was printed uh, on the build service directly. It had no wrap, no brim, no nothing. And it stuck perfect to the, to the PEI sheet. And then I moved on trying to think, well, what else could I print that's pretty cool? Well, here's a model 1911, a replica of a, a Colt pistol. And uh, this came off of Thingiverse. These supports were already added to the file. They're very nice supports. I basically I downloaded it, threw it in my slicer. My layers are always uh, 644. This has, I think, like 4% in, maybe, I don't know, 4 or 5% infill in it. But the finish came out very nice. I left all the cobwebs on it from the stringing so you could see it. But I'll simply clip all these off, lightly sand them up, and then I'll hit it with my heat gun and get rid of all the strings that I can't pick off by hand. And this was printed at 0 .20 uh, layer height. But yeah, all the text, everything came out beautiful on this. It came out very nice. Very nice. And I have a white one here. I printed the second one in white. And once again, minor string for the PETG. I have used a lot of other brands of PETG that I've tried out, and some string more than others. This is very minor with the Sunly, very minor stringing. But the finish quality came out beautiful. And here's an emblem from a game I love to play called Elite Dangerous. It kind of goes along with a Python ship. And as you can see, this has quite a bit of stringing on it. There's a lot of places in here I need to pick out, and I clip a bunch of that off. But once again, a heat gun will clean that right up. But like I say, it was printed directly on the bed with no brim on my PEI sheet, on my spring steel PEI sheet from TH3D Studios. And it printed very nice. Came out great. I'll probably put this, paint it and put it in the, on, in the wall in my room next to my Vive or my other main computer. And I'd like to show you, what, which I didn't do at the beginning of the video, how easy it is to change out your master spool. It comes with three little zip ties here. Well, not, well excuse me, not zip ties. They're little Velcro straps. Let's run the Velcro strap. straight through the spool get my big old fat fingers in there
pull it tight back on itself and it locks. And there's three of them, so you turn the spool. And so your filament don't go crazy on you. I got a little cardboard tab here. A little cardboard tab here. Got temperature recommendations on it. Let me stick that on there. Take the second Velcro strip. Stick that on there. Pull it tight. Turn it again. Put the third one on. There's designs for these on Thingiverse where you can print these out. Different people have uh, designed them and put them on there. Let's get that a little bit tighter there. Alrighty, now all three are on. You simply take the spool, turn it, unlock it, take out the spool, put on your next color, put this back in your Ziploc bag with your desiccant, and this just turns and locks. It's very cool how this thing works. One thing I would like to see them do at Sun Lu is to make these spools a different color because most spools are black and you might forget what spool you have and it would suck if you accidentally threw it away. It does have their name on it. And it tells you right on it when you're about 50% on the spool when you're down to about 20%. But like I say, it locks. It's nice. It's, it's really cool. So overall, I was very happy with the Sun Lu PETG. I have no issues with it. And yes, I'll definitely be buying it in the future to try out and uh, try out some different colors. Now, if I would have used blue tape on my Hypercube, it would have held to it fine. If I would have used, uh, if I had a mirror and I would have used uh, glue stick, it would have worked fine. Uh, there's lots of different types of adhesions you can get for mirror or glass. Do not ever print PETG directly on mirror or glass. When you go to pop it, it'll probably break the glass. Or when it cools down, it could pop it. So whenever you print with PETG on a... Uh, mirror or glass always use some kind of adhesion in between the, the first layer <coughs> and the mirror I'd like to thank everybody for watching this video today about Sunlu PETG I have some PLA coming from them soon in the mail so I'll be reviewing their PLA and uh, just want to say thank you and uh, have a great weekend everybody please like and subscribe I'd really appreciate it have a good day and happy printing